Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 30th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you're into malware analysis, uh, you'll enjoy Xavier's uh, diary from today. He's analyzing an RTF document. Now, what was sort of special here is, first of all, it was actually a valid RTF document. It did open a fake document if you open it in an RTF reader, but the shellcode was just sort of appended to the end of the file. Of course, Xavier didn't stop here. Xavier will walk you through the entire analysis and show how he managed to actually decode this shellcode and figure out what it did. And probably the biggest news today was that over the weekend, it appears uh, the PHP Git repository was compromised and at least two malicious commits were pushed uh, to the PHP source repository. At this point, there's still a lot of questions about as to what actually happened. The two commits are uh, implementing a pretty obvious uh, backdoor that would uh, allow an attacker to execute arbitrary codes via a specifically crafted HTTP user agent header. Now, in my opinion, looking at the commits, it looks like the attacker wanted these commits to be found. They were not very well hidden, but essentially demonstrate what could have happened here if the PHP maintainers would not have been more careful reviewing the code. If you're currently a PHP user, this is unlikely going to affect you because these commits did not make it in any of the current released versions of PHP. So this will only affect you if you did download the actual current uh, Git version of PHP. On the other hand, since we don't really know much as to what exactly happened, there is still a question that this may sort of be a tip of the iceberg kind of situation where we have other malicious commits that have not been found yet. According to a post to the PHP internals mailing list, PHP will now use GitHub instead of their own Git architecture Probably a sound choice and there is quite a bit of discussion on the list now whether or not to implement additional security features like for example signed commits for PHP which apparently were not used so far. The post announcing the compromise suggests that it was the actual Git server that was compromised here, not a particular user's account. These commits were made using the identities of two of the PHP core uh, contributors, Nikita Popov as well as Rasmus Leardov. So if it's just the accounts compromised, the attacker would have had to be able to compromise these two specific accounts, uh, which again uh, makes it somewhat more likely that a vulnerability in the actual server, the operating system or software running on the server was used uh, to compromise it. If you're using Git, and I think that implies uh, to all source code management systems, uh, you need to make sure that contributors are properly authenticated. GitHub uh, put some additional restrictions on that uh, recently in that it requires either key-based SH uh, authentication or two-factor authentication. But I would still recommend assigned commits. Uh, That's uh, probably one of the better ways to make sure that you are able to trace back who submitted a particular update. And of course, requiring the approval of multiple administrators in order uh, to actually merge a pull request is also a security measure that's often implemented. But well, you're not using PHP, you switched to Node.js, a much more sort of modern uh, platform. 
you still have to be careful and you may have to patch your code because of a new vulnerability found in the netmask uh, npm package this package is used by literally hundreds of thousands of other packages so even if you don't directly include it in your code it may be included as a dependency and the problem here is actually relatively straightforward you use the netmask package typically to check if a particular IP address is within a certain network. So for example, you have a list of private networks like your RFC 1918 networks, and then you have an IP address and you check if it's within one of these private networks. The problem is that IP addresses may be expressed in octal by prefixing it with a zero. Well, uh, the netmask package doesn't uh, notice that. So for example, let's say a byte in your IP address is 012, which in decimal would be 10. So 012.1.1.1 would be within the 10 slash eight network, but the netmask library will actually interpret it as 12 when it does its input validation. And so this particular IP address, while it is within the uh, local, the 10.network may actually slip by as being not within that network. And you can see where you make sort of security decisions based on IP address being inside or outside one of these private ranges that uh, these security decisions may be bypassed by using the octal notation for an IP address. This vulnerability is also triggered as uh, CVE, CVE 2021 28918. So make sure that you update your NPM packages and are using the latest greatest version of NetMask. Well, and is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.